Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jim Hughes. Uh, welcome to another Untamed interview. You join me and my friend Nick Woodhams. Um, we are on a lovely uh, path, walking through the heather of the Pentland Hills, just south of Edinburgh. It's a delightful scene. I hope you can get the, uh, the nice purple colours in the background in there. I thought it would be a nice setting to this little chatette with my, with my good friend Nick. Um, Nick, care to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Nick Williams. I'm a former tank commander with the Royal Scots Green Guards in the British Army. And I left last year to start my own company called Adventure Pass, which is a card that people buy and get some discounts on sports equipment, rental and tuition around the world. So skiing, surfing, mountain biking, that sort of stuff. And I'm also a, now a reserve army officer in a regiment up here in Edinburgh where I am at the influence of means I basically work on engagement with the Middle East. So not like a social media influence? Uh, some bits of social media, mainly um, about influencing in the area of operations we have. So it's Jordan, Iraq and... Uh, I was taking the piss, but... The Iraqis, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, social media. Uh, some of you may or may not know, um, the military and military levers are, are actual quite a large focus of mine. Uh, I really want to help uh, guys coming out of the military due to my, my links with the military. I'm not a vet, but, but I know a fair few people in it. Um, I want to help military leavers transition out uh, and into the entrepreneurial world. Uh, so I've chosen Nick um, because he was available and no one else answered the call. Um, but also he's uh, you know fairly, fairly well positioned between the military life and the entrepreneurial side of things. So I wanted to have a quick chat with him around the, around the subject of the transition and, uh, and get a, an idea of what it's like, especially in the UK forces. So I suppose where we could start, Nick, is what's your viewpoint um, on the often peddled perception that all of those people who are coming out, or certainly from an officer point of view, come out of the military, uh, you know, and automatically make great entrepreneurs? Yeah, that definitely gets uh, a lot of airtime, that view. I would argue that it's a little bit different, a bit more nuanced than that. It's actually probably that if you're an entrepreneurial type person, the military is a good place for you to go and learn a lot of skills that you can take to the entrepreneurial world at some point. But you do still need to have that beginning, that, that, that underlying feeling that you want to go you know, ultimately change the world in some way. Mm -hmm. And I think that the army is just a fantastic breeding ground to bring out the best things about you and your skill set and give you other skills that you might not already have just at the base. At the base. So what, what kind of skills are you talking about then? The, the, what kind of skills are transferable between military and, and the entre and entrepreneurship? Yeah, I think two are the ones that come to mind that I've used, that I've found I'm, I'm all I'm good at, and that's the man management bit. Um, you know, you don't get many organisations where you'll get to look after quite a considerable amount of people um, at an early age. And one of the biggest skills an entrepreneur, well certainly a, a CEO needs to have, is, is, is talent acquisition and management. You, you can learn that very, very well in the army. And uh, I think that's, so that's, that's definitely the first one that I've noticed as soon as I got out. And um, the second one is probably about the, the fact that you die from the strategic right down into the granular detail. Um, and you have to do that sort of on, a, on an hourly basis sometimes. And that's huge for being a founder of a company because you do need to, like I did in, Af in, in Iraq, in fact, you know, I had to know what was going on in elections and what the, the effect of that would be on the police in Basra. But at the same time, I also needed to know what size wing nuts my tank was going to need for that operation that afternoon. So you've got to be able to jump right up and yeah. down. And I think that's that's something that I've found as you start a company, you need to think strategically every morning, but you've also got to be able to get down to the granular in the daytime yeah. too. So, so what you're saying is that you, you come out a very well-rounded uh, individual and, and very well suited to the entrepreneurial world. The fact you can you can kind of dive in and, and look after projects from multiple different stages, from the, the details to, the, to, the, to the, um, the, the big strategy, the big picture thinking, so to speak. Yeah, um, definitely. Would you say that coming out as such a, 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 rounded, a rounded person is, can actually be detrimental because it can cloud your judgment in terms of what you're really passionate about, what gives you that spark, um, versus what you're just good at? Yeah, no, definitely. I think that's, that's bang on. Um, the example that I give is that you know it's an institution. So you, once you're when you're getting praised for something, you're getting praised for that what that institution recognises as good. 
So you can, and that, that's quite difficult to know actually if you enjoyed it or not. It's sometimes the difference is quite stark, but you wouldn't know it because it's really nice to be told you're good at something. So what I would always recommend to most people, who, to, to people who leave the military, is they've got to sit down at some point and look back at their career and critique it and work out what the points where they really, yeah, they might have got a good rapport, but did they really enjoy it? And actually, if they got a bad rapport, but actually they really enjoyed it, then that might be a place that they should start their journey, their journey post military. And is, do you think there's a there's a, a weakness in the institution that, in terms of creative thinking, in terms of trying to encourage um, uh, which introspection with people, in terms of, you know what, here's your report. You know, you were good at this, you weren't great at that, but this is something that you can build on and, and, and actually try and get that dialogue going between them. Do you think, do you think there's a fundamental weakness there? Do you think there's a, that people are coming out and, and, and sort of with quite narrow thinking as to what they could do and how their skills are transferable? Yeah, I do. I think um, you get uh, the, the, the big thing that gets missed a lot is the mid-year appraisal, so halfway through the year. And what happens is it somebody says, I need you to do this, this and this for me to write this, this and this on your final report. And I don't think it could be. It should be like that. I think that report should be you saying, "I think I'm good at this, this, and this." What do you think I'm good at? Yeah. And getting that critique, and that's and that doesn't happen. And it's and it's quite tough to ask because where I get in being an institution, there's a certain way we do things, and sometimes if you change that, people aren't particularly happy about it. Um, so mm -hmm. I'd say that probably if it, if I were to spend any money now, if, if I was back in the regular army and I had any money in my um, so learning credits here or some kind of resettlement money, I'd spend it on really analysing myself like and getting somebody else to help me with the critiquing of what I'm good at. Because you're not getting it from the army? Yeah, because I'm, I'm just not getting it. I wouldn't be getting that from yeah. the army. Not in any, not at any point in the resettlement process as you leave the army do you really yeah. get a full-on grilling about yourself. And I think it's absolutely hugely valuable to get it. And something like you offer, Jim, would be a hugely useful um, to a lot of soldiers and officers all over the place. Like, I hadn't thought about that. Well, you should think about it. All right. Well, on that note, we should probably end it here. Um, my arm's knackered. And um, how are you getting on with these midges? There's a lot of midges in Scotland. Jacket on. Clever boy. Anyway, on that note, good evening. <laughs>